Welcome to the Unshadowed Thought Podcast with James Hall. This is the series I'm going to call Working Past It. And it's dedicated to the people that have reached out to me in good faith to try to get through this injury and a host of other injuries in an effort to live a life that is a little bit more rewarding and and is just in a better place. I want to thank the people that have reached out to me and, um, and dedicate this set to them. All right, welcome back to it. Um, This time I might break it up into a session and then another session instead all at once. Maybe that last one was a little repetitive. Um, Maybe I'll have some different thoughts I think that might creep in that I can share. It's hard getting five years worth of thoughts into like a regular podcast. Oftentimes I walk away and still think of different things that I wanted to share that I didn't get to put in here. There's so many good anecdotes and so many things I've learned from my own experience than people in the community that are just kind of miraculous and mind blowing that that don't end up making it in. But <clears throat> today we're going to talk about activity and the body and sleep, the things I've learned about that. So this was a major change after I did that long fast. You can tell a lot of things changed for me on that long fast, but for my body, but also in my understanding, the fast taught me an immeasurable amount of things about how the body works and how it responds and and things like that. So something I learned on that fast is that pacing is essential for everyone. Um, looking back, I realized a lot of the times I my emotions got out of control at work. It just stemmed from me, one, not taking breaks, Right, and I'm not talking about a 15 minute break every so and so. I'm not talking about the breaks that a company dictates for you. I'm talking about the breaks that you need. Right, um, if you if you do a heavy amount of work and you feel like you're under load, you need to be able to take a couple minutes to just sit back, relax, reset yourself, and then come back and go forward after you've given yourself a few minutes. Just generally, like anything that you do, because what happens over time is you keep just stretching it further and further and further, and your nervous system essentially just gets weaker and weaker and weaker because it's trying to just make everything fit, and you're cramming this ideology and this thought process in there that you can't stop, that you need to keep going. You need to keep up with everybody else. You have to be productive, and all these ideas. I mean, this can go from like a stay-at-home mom, like thinking she needs to keep cleaning and cooking and doing all these things um, to serve others. Or it can go for people in the workplace that think they just need to, they think the way path to success is by production. And the path to success is never production, right? You may be rewarded for a production short term, but the path to success in any forum is by like thinking smarter, not harder, utilizing your resources, knowing when to put in the effort and when to rest. And when you look at this in kind of a robust system like that, it's an ongoing and indefinite system of creative, brilliant, effective ideas and work, right? That is very, it's very simple, right? If you obey those simple rules, even though they're broad, right? There's a lot you'd have to figure out within those rules. It always works. So this goes for yourself and it goes for your work. It goes for everything, right? And one thing I think maybe I mentioned before on this podcast is that I'm not showing you how to get better from this injury or what you're facing right now. I'm showing you how to be 120, 150, 200% of the self that you have always been, right? Um, this is not <laughs> the answer to chronic injury um, and like psychiatric injury, right? Or, and disease is not oh, I get healed from my disease and then I'm better, right? Think about this. This is the key, I would say to human existence, it sounds a little bit arrogant and broad, right? But it's the key to human functioning, right? As human beings, we are healthy when we're happy. We have a balanced bodily function and stimulation, like good sleep. We're happy with what we're eating. We're eating the things that we're made to eat, right? These are all just very simplistic things that we think we know since we're kids, right? But the fact is that we don't know them because we demonstrate over and over and over again that we fail trying to keep these things balanced and we fail to even know what they are. If you go out and ask people, like, what does it mean to be happy, right? You could get a bunch of different answers. Mostly you'd be crappy and based on having money and um, kind of um, gratifying yourself in some sense, right? It's like, what's healthy? You're going to get a bunch of different answers. 90% of them you get from 
uh, Americans at least are going to be complete trash and they're going to be based in fake science and fake ideas that are also based in a person not understanding for themselves their own practical applicable knowledge right to to what it is right and then um you can just you just go on for there right just that's the thing. These are simplistic ideas, but each person needs to understand it for themselves and be working to further shape their understanding of it ongoing. But the fact is at the end of the day, whatever you're doing, it needs to free you mentally, right? And then it needs to free you physically. You need to feel like you're well stimulated physically, but not overextended. You need to be getting a good amount of rest, but not laying on the couch all the time, right? So that's what if you think about the earth and how it's set up right it's set up in these cycles right the sun's up for a while and then the moon comes up there's there's a cycle of work and rest there's a balance nature is perfectly balanced right all these things have a natural rhythm and balance to them it's showing you something it's showing you something very important right that don't worry about what other people are telling you about what true work and balance and happiness is, right? It's showing you that it already exists. You're already there. You just have to listen to it and listen to yourself and and cruise, right? And trust and have faith that you can figure it out for yourself. And if you apply yourself, you'll come up with the right answers. It's also what I'm telling you. I'm giving you guidelines for the things that I have found that I know work for everybody, right? And again, that's a broad thing. It's saying this is this is what we fit into as human beings. This is what here's Hill's injury because it also facilitates a positive existence and a happy existence and a, a thriving existence, right? The same key to thriving is the same key to overcoming chronic illness. It's that simple, right? And doesn't that make sense, right? If you're trying to cure a disease, right, with a pill, well, what's it going to matter when you just get a different disease when you're done because you haven't solved the overarching problem and you haven't attacked the roots or you don't have any ability to attack the roots of an issue or a problem, right? There we go. Probably said that a million times. Going to keep saying it because I don't think, I know people in the community just don't get it. They just don't understand this. They think that there's a temporary fix for everything. They can just push through this and if someone tells, gives them the right advice, like they'll they'll be fine and everything will go right but there's massive problems with people getting better and then there's massive problems with people having setbacks and going back once they've gotten better and this is like this constant stumbling and this constant black hole everyone's getting sucked into and that's because none of them are free in their thinking right and none of them are considering the, the right course essentially when it comes to like being a human being right they're thinking there's all these we're so advanced we can come up with all these alternative answers and there's specific scientific answers that work but the fact is is that science has a very limited practical application that's effective for everybody right um, and it goes back we knew these answers a very very long time ago like a hundred years ago right when you're talking about building shelter um, providing community right having basic like scientific and medical um, help right like resetting a bone when you break it um, different things, right? The more complex we've gotten, um, the lot we've lost more wisdom, and now science is hurting far more than it's helping. So, this is the overarching theme, and it goes back to virtue as well. Like you have to have the fortitude and the ability to practice these things diligently, right? Without giving up on them and just going back to your over there's yourself that was a slave to scientific studies and listening to what your doctor said and all this stuff right it takes discipline and patience to, to go through this um and you have to you know have compassion for yourself and you have to be entirely honest with yourself as well otherwise this stuff will just fail so there's a lot i'm saying in a very small amount of time so i'm reiterating it so people understand if you drop one of these pieces right you may just end up back in the same rubbish spot that you were in i had to practice these all these pieces this is what I had to practice for five years to get through. I know other people have practiced kind of different things, but in the same form and have made it. And then some of them have struggles afterward, right? Um, but at least they made it out and they're learning now and they can and they know well enough to stay out, right? But what I'm saying also encompasses a lot of the mistakes I see people making that are healed and are better. Um, you know, they have different struggles in their life they go back and forth, right? And I just see these these big missing pieces that are right in front of their faces and they just don't acknowledge them because they think they're still believing in science a little bit and these certain lifestyles that 
aren't honest when we're not being honest with ourselves, and we're not being compassionate towards ourselves, and we're not practicing like patience and discipline and things right so so that's that okay so pacing and rest right so everything that you do is going to have a natural balance right being in a severely injured state or an extreme state that balance is going to be probably something vastly different than what you see around you and what you've expected your whole life right so for instance like i tell people exercise you know work out get some healthy activity don't overdo it but you do something every day do something positive you look forward to with your body even if it causes you a little bit of pain and aggravation if you do it every single day maybe multiple times a day um you're gonna see some positive improvement you're gonna see like brain growth and improvement with positive thinking patterns and positive mental stimulation and in and attacking a challenge and feel like you accomplished something and then you're going to have positive physical feedback right but that being said i tell people that and then they come back like not long i can't work out i can't exercise get i get sick and i have all these pains and all stuff whatever it's like and i asked him what did you do so like I, you know i just tried to work out for 15 minutes and i said no like no right if you can only handle being up and about for 30 seconds then that's all you're doing right now, right? If you're taking what you can do successfully and you're doing it and you're thinking about it when you're doing, why am I doing this? Why is this positive? Why is this good? And you're like, okay, I like moving around, right? You're bringing these positive, honest thoughts back to yourself. I like moving around. I like doing things, right? I don't like laying around all the time. I feel like I'm wasting away. I know I need, but I do like resting, right? So I like giving a little bit of positive activity, right? And then I like laying down and resting. Both become gratifying, right? You get up, you do a little bit of work, and then maybe you go back to resting again, right? And you're what this is doing is building a positive feedback loop and cycle, right? I get up, I do a little bit for 30 seconds, it starts hurting and I stop, all right? All right, you know where your limit is. There's a little bit of pain, but you can get familiar with it, you can get comfortable with it, and it can be a positive thing, right? that little bit of pain that you're getting whatever it is it's showing you your limits right it's showing you where you're at in your state of physical existence and your mental existence right stop thinking that's negative let go of any ideas you have about what it is and what it is not right your body and your mind are working together to ha give you this gift of existence right and so stop thinking that when you feel pain right that that's suffering and it's something horrible, right? It's not. The pain, the signals you get are just electrical impulses that are going through your body that your brain is sending back and forth between different locations that are notifying your consciousness of what's happening in your body. Now, you've programmed yourself for the last 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 80 years, 90, 100 years you've been alive, that those are negative things and that something's broken or something's hurt or that you've been cut or something horrible's happened because you have this certain sensation. I don't know how many times I'll repeat this, but you need to unprogram. You need to unlearn that. It is absolutely essential to human existence and to your recovery. People need to stop associating pain signals and bodily signals with some sort of mystery freaking illness and I'm going to die and I'm in bad shape and this is horrible and all this stuff, right? Right now, I get tonight to say horrible. You said horrible. It's my programming, right? My indoctrination is coming out, right? Like I get the horrible tinnitus and ringing in my ears, right? That's how I identify it with my language. But when I hear it now, like I heard it come on real loud last night, I realized that I had been doing too much. I've been overstimulating myself and I've been around a lot of loud noises throughout the day. And when that came on, I was like, because I haven't had it in a while. When it came on, I, I didn't think, oh, no, I'm going to have to deal with this tinnitus again, right? I thought, what have I been doing today? And instantly, I thought all the really loud stuff I had done. Because at the time, I did the loud stuff and I was around loud stuff. I was like, this is probably going to come back later, right? And I'm probably going to either be exhausted, overstimulated, irritable, or tired, or get tinnitus, right? Or, or a bunch of other things, right? But when that, so when that happened... Right, I've worked really hard for a long time. It used to, I used to instantly get panic. Panic would just kick on after my TMS injury, and that's it. I would have panic. I'd have the blowback from the panic, and then I'd have days of trying to recover somehow that I didn't really know how um, 
from being overexhausted from being in fight or flight for like a day after having panic, right? And then I'd be in fight or flight about being in fight or flight the next couple days, right? That's that's how things are probably working for you now to some degree, right? If you're listening to this, if not, wonderful, right? But the point is, I'm giving you simple instructions, but every single day you need to deprogram your body from these from thinking negative thoughts associated with the signals that your body's sending you. Your body's just talking to you. You can read about it and hear about it in lots of other places, like uh, Rocksteady from uh, Joey Remini, um, a bunch of other places too, they talk about this phenomena, right? But I'm here to tell you is if, if you didn't believe it from them, believe it from me, right? At first I thought it was just a bunch of fooey. And even now, certain pain signals I get, I react to, right? But the vast majority of ones, including like severe back pain and tinnitus and stuff, like I just, it's there. I understand it's there. It's telling me something. And I, I no longer think of it as some problem that's going to plague me. I, my brain skips that and it goes straight to, okay, no big deal. This We're just going to do some massage. We're going to do some stretching, right? We're going to do some ice and heat. We'll do that for a day. I should feel better, right? If not, I'll do it for a couple days. If not, I'll do it for a couple weeks and I'll implement and I'll stick, I'll go hard, I'll double up on these uh, strength training exercises that I have for my back, right? And then it'll rectify. And I'm calm, absolutely confident that it will rectify because I've been through such horrible things and I've heard stories of things so much worse that people have recovered from. I know that that's true, right? Okay. So keep that in mind. That is absolutely essential. So as you do all these things, right? So this is kind of for advanced people that are really trying to work through this stuff. So as you're considering all the things that I'm telling you and you're you're either doing it or something close to it or you're figuring it out, right? Keep that in mind, right? We're reprogramming the way our brain receives signals from the body into a positive or neutral kind of light that is something we'll be able to handle and we'll control as we go forward and we can and we can deal with, right? And um the more you understand these differently, the less hold they have on you, it generates less stress, it generates less fight or flight, right? So overall, your pain comes down. Overall, all your bodily functions come back down into a healthy range where they feel less intense as well. So it all folds and all works on each other, right? So back to the pacing and resting. So everything that you do, right, whether it's work, exercise, reading, cooking, anything, right? Think about what you can do comfortably, right? Do the comfortable amount of work. Then push it a little bit. If you feel like pushing it a little bit, do not overdo it, right? But then it's critical at the end is that you rest in your pace, right? And then you'll, you will get that energy back and it will come back. You just, you need to be honest with yourself and you need to be compassionate towards yourself. Think of yourself as your own child and how you would treat a child. Um, Not if you're some horrible narcissist, but if you were a parent that you would want to have yourself, right? Think about how you would treat a kid, right? Anytime my kids or my family go nuts and they get hurt or something, I'm always like, okay, stop everything. Let's just let's just deal with this and get you back in good shape. Nothing else matters, right? And let's figure out what wrong, went wrong and, and go for it in a positive way, right? It doesn't matter. The earth could be coming to an end and I would still stop everything that I was doing and just be present and make sure that they're okay, right? Look at yourself that way. You maybe I'm tough on myself, right? And I have been. I'm working on it. You got to think of yourself in the same way. Compassion and complete honesty. You got to be honest with you. What can you do and what cannot? What you, not what you expect or what you've been able to do in the past, but what you can honestly, realistically do right now. And you start slow and you start working up, okay? And that you take that approach with everything, right? So when you think about activity that you're going to do, right? exercise I don't want to say that I think it's essential but I think it is to some degree right it can look different for different people but um, there are kind of two different ways things that I look at right exercising creates positive feedback in the body right like I wasn't really big in going to the gym and just like lifting weights and doing strength training. I always did a little bit, but I focused on running and long distance running, right? When I got injured, um, the long distance running didn't do anything. It didn't make me feel better anymore. I just, I would do it just because I was 
hoping like maybe my cardiovascular health would just give me some sort of benefit. And I know that it did, right? But I never got any of like all the horrors it was going through emotionally. It never really helped with that. Um, not more than just a, the most, the smallest bit, right? Um, so when I, when I fasted, oh, this is something I forgot to mention before about the pacing, right? When I was fasting, um, so I was deep into a fast. I was two weeks into a fast and I wanted to cook something for my family. We're going back to the pacing here, how I learned that pa what pacing was, the honesty of pacing and how important it is. When I was fasting, um, I'm at two weeks, so I'm completely and utterly exhausted. Literally, I'd walk kind of across the room or maybe I'd, I'd walk and get something and start trying to do a little bit of something. Maybe I was trying to help my, my family clean for a little bit because I was bored or whatever, right? I'd go for about like five, 10 minutes, maybe at the most, and then be completely exhausted and have to sit down, right? And it kind of was driving me nuts. Um, and I never really paid attention to it. But I, I was I was like, I want to cook this meal for you guys, right? And I'm going to I'm gonna do it. So you guys don't help me. I got everything set up the way I want it set up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cook and then dinner will be ready in an hour or whatever, right? And um, when I was cooking, I was really excited to cook, right? So I started really vigorously going at throwing things together. I had multiple things going, right? Um had different steps I needed to follow and all these ideas about how good the food was going to come out and all these different things I wanted to try that I'd never thought about or tried before, which is one of the benefits of fasting. I started doing things and thinking about things I had never thought about before. Um, cooking was one. I've never been interested in cooking. Um, and I was making this kind of complex meal for my family. Um, so I started doing it and after just a couple minutes, because I was doing it really intensely and a lot of mental effort was going into it, um, I was completely exhausted and I started totally crashing, right? I just felt sick. I was so tired. And I was like, no, like, no, I got to finish this. I want to finish this so bad. I've, I've only been at this for a couple minutes. Horrible. I'm stopping. I'm exhausted, right? This is, just, this is a horribly bad scene. I, I thought I could make it a lot longer than that. I'm like, what can I do? And I was thinking about it. Well, you get tired a lot. It's just... Just rest for a minute and see if you can finish, right? But I felt so bad, I was sure that I'd have to rest at least for an hour or two before I could get back to it, right? I pulled it, I had a chair from the dining room table. I pulled it into the kitchen and just sat it there, which is like, I felt like an elderly person. No offense to anyone elderly listening, right? Like I need a chair with me in what I'm doing so I can sit down and then try to work and then go back and sit down again. But I didn't care. At this point, I lost any pride that I had on anything which is a good thing, right? And I'm like, okay, I'll just sit down. So I'm sitting there and surprisingly, I think I sat for like five minutes and I was totally invigorated again, right? All my energy had returned and which going com from completely exhausted to invigorated in five minutes was a, a huge thing. I literally was like giving up mentally. I was kind of broken and upset that I couldn't do this and I'm getting further along in the fast. So I'm a little bit, I'm really emotionally volatile even though emotionally I'm way better than I was before I was fasting. Um, you always come back to this kind of calm spot, but you experience a big range of emotion, which is healthy. It's a healthy balance. It's a real emotion, not a artificially adduced fight or flight death emotion, right? So, so I sit down for five minutes and all of a sudden I feel better. And then, and so I'm like, okay, like I'm, I'm back at it. And I was kind of surprised, right? And I go and I'm cooking again and I'm starting to get really exhausted again. It's just a couple minutes in, you know? And I'm like, okay, I need to kind of adjust what I'm doing and then maybe I can just rest through this thing. And so I, I'm like, okay, I'll throw a couple things on. They got to sit for a minute. I got some stuff ready. And as I'm kind of preparing to sit down again, I'm getting more exhausted, like trying to get ready to stay, trying to change the dynamic of how I'm cooking, right? So I sit down again for a couple minutes, right? And I'm good to go. I get back up, I'm cooking again. So I finish this meal by like every few minutes sitting down for a couple minutes and then cooking again, and then sitting back down for cups. So as for a healthy middle-aged adult who's used to working, you know, before like 10 to 12 hours a day nonstop with like, I wouldn't give myself breaks. I wouldn't even take lunch most days, right? If I ate lunch, I usually ate it while I was working, right? Um, so go, that having that shift and looking at things like, and in that moment, I had this huge revelation. It was so clear to me. I said, okay, look at this. Like you're totally exhausted. You just sit for a couple minutes. Your body completely rejuvenates itself. And then you get up and you can continue working, right? And I'm thinking, it's, it's kind of what they teach you when you're a kid, right? And kind of why they have the rules of having breaks in 
in a in labor laws, right? Um, and I'm like, well, this is so basic and so simple, yet I was completely lost on me. I didn't understand how it worked and why it worked. And I'm thinking about the nervous system taking care of itself and how it needs rest. It needs to sleep at night. It needs these small breaks from intense thinking and intense physical activity to wind itself back up so you can keep going. And I said, why? Why is it that I don't understand that this is this principle is always being applied to everything that we do, whether we ignore it or not, is a different question, right? So from that moment forward, I started thinking about things in a different light. I started thinking about things in terms of a healthy cycle, a rest, a cycle of rest and activity. And as I thought through those things, I got really great, incredible mental gratification from over the short term, right, of thinking of doing a task and then looking forward to a break enjoying my break because I'm tired, right? And then going back to my task, looking forward to the break and then breaking and then going back to the task, right? This cadence and this natural rhythm that I was restoring to myself gave me both physical strength and mental strength, right? So much of our mental failings are based on unhealthy cycles, right? Oh, I need to keep working, right? I don't have time for a break. If I just keep working, then I can go home earlier, right? I'll just work harder for longer. That way I can just go home later. All that defunct, all those defunct thinking processes contribute to um, nervous system breakdown, mental breakdown, physical breakdown. Um, your nervous system can't regulate either one anymore and it can't heal anyone men anymore, give it rest. And then we can push through anything emotionally and ideologically right but it's when we do that for an extended period of time right it's okay to do it for like even a week or two like say you're lost in the wilderness right and you need to push through you can do that right but then when you're done you need to come back to healthy cycles again so that your body can heal and function in a way that maximizes its potential side note right okay side note over If you can remember, we're back. We're talking about exercise again. We're talking about um, gentle exercise, right? So we're pacing through our exercise. When you set an expectation for exercise and activity, um, if you can do five minutes, just do five minutes, especially when you're getting started. When you're getting started, you're figuring out your boundaries. Don't focus on what you're doing with your exercise at the beginning. Focus on your boundaries and being comfortable you're doing this to try to get better. You're not doing it to try to achieve a goal or get something done or feel good about yourself because you worked out for 10 minutes when you should have been working out for five and now you're exhausted for the rest of the day and the next day you're gonna feel like you wanna throw up when you exercise, right? That's not what we're doing here. You have the wrong mindset if that's what you're thinking. So get rid of it, get rid of it and then come back and then do it when the time is right and your mindset is right, okay? So. Raylan Eagle talks about strength training as being a really good stimulation for your nervous system. So because she said that, and I heard this other places, I dropped my cardio and I started doing strength training. When I started to do the strength training, I had, first of all, I overextended and exhausted myself when I first started doing it. The first couple of days I did it, I was real gentle, right? I was like, okay, go gentle, whatever. But as I started picking up and realizing I could do a little bit more, I overextended and when I overextended, I started getting this akathasia feeling, this like overabundance of energy, like this internal kind of ramp up that I couldn't shut off. Um, It was weird because I'm lifting weights and doing strength training, right? And I'm thinking I should be exhausted afterwards, but the opposite happened to me. I was so amped afterwards. I just, I went home and I kept, I was doing a bunch of things to try to keep myself occupied and busy. Um, I was utilizing all the energy that I had. And then guess what? I went to go to sleep that night. Wasn't happening. You know, I went to sleep late and then I woke up like three in the morning. And I, geez, I think for the first few times I went back to the gym at like three in the morning because I didn't have anything else to do. Um, so I overdid it and I had an unexpected result, right? That just shows the dysregulation of the nervous system. Instead of being overtired, I got overamped. And even still to this day, that was a while ago, I started that probably like a year ago, right? To this day, when I go too hard in the gym, um, I can't sleep. I stop sleeping. I have too much energy, right? And again, this is, I'm, I'm grateful this isn't a pain signal that's being sent. Like I'm not in excruciating pain or I'm laid out on the couch for two weeks exhausted right? But it is my nervous system sending 
my brain and my consciousness a clear signal like you're doing too much if your energy is out of control you're out of balance do you want to not sleep right it's these gentle nudge do you want to not sleep do you want to feel like you can't sit down do you want to start shaking when you get upset like do you want all these negative these really strong signals to come in or are you listening to me and you know you're getting you're doing too much so you need to start resting more napping more putting more space bringing down the si the time you're spent strength training maybe bringing down your weight your the size of weights you're lifting right because actually so i started paying attention to this phenomenon and then i realized that i get to certain exercises that are harder for me because my muscle mass is weak in those areas like fright right i'm long distance runner right so doing the i can lift a ton of weights with my legs and it's easy right but my upper body is absolutely opposite right so i get to these really intense exercises where i'm moving around a lot of weights with parts of my body that aren't used to it and i'm starting to get amped even during the exercise right and then when i'm done i'm kind of like a little i'm in this little stress state and then i'm just like okay let's just get this gym thing over with and i just go on to the next exercise just start like kind of grinding it out and pumping and getting through it because i want to do all my exercises right this mentality this approach is the exact problem that everybody has and that i have right if you're not there to be there and to enjoy each exercise, to pay attention to your body and get the most out of it and to be patient and to be balanced, I don't want to say you shouldn't be there, you shouldn't be doing it, but that's something we need to work through and we need to focus on it and look at it and adjust based on that, right? So we need to realize we're doing it and we need to see what it's causing and then look and say, okay, where do we want to be? We want to be healing and getting positive stimulation, but instead we're overdoing it and getting overstimulated. So where's the balance? Where's the good thing at? And then I realized, and I was kind of doing this routine that a friend had given me, right? But then I, I went back a day a little bit later and I said, you know what, today I'm just going to do what I want to do and work the parts of my body that I feel like they need to be worked, right? And I'm going to do the weights that I'm comfortable with, right? And I got really happy when I thought about doing that, right? Because for a while I had been pushing, doing this other routine just because someone that was smart that I knew that I was, I respected, gave me a thing to do with, it had lots of rest involved in it, right? It was, he had, they had the right idea, but it was just a little bit different than what my body was craving a certain amount of exercise in certain areas that I wasn't giving it, right? And so I went and I started doing just the things that I want to do at the pace that I wanted. And I had the greatest time I worked out for longer, right, even. And when I left there, I just felt great. I felt elated. My body felt great. My mind felt great. And I carried on with that for a while, right? And it was great. And then I fell back kind of into a, I started getting negative feedback at some point, right? And then I had to start thinking about that. And I'm in a different cycle of it right now, right? But I'm very, very good at noticing now exactly why I'm getting amped up, what I'm doing, and what to change. Right, so I'm getting an understanding and a practical knowledge, so that I can adjust it and hit it right, and then, then it becomes this great tool. Then, like if I'm feeling fatigued in other areas, or I'm I'm tired because maybe I've eaten badly, I know kind of the right amount to go to the gym and to do. And then if I want to throw in a little bit of running and cardio, like I do that, and I can get the right balance. So, let me talk about that for a minute. So strength training uses a different kind of aspect of your nervous system. It has to summon a tremendous amount of energy in a very sh for a very short burst and deliver it to your whole body in a, in a kind of this burst way. So it's a very rhythmic way of exercising your nervous system, right? You deliver a lot, you rest, you deliver a lot, and then you rest, right? So when Raylan Agle talked about strength training being good for your nervous system, I think that's really at the heart of what of what she was seeing with it and what science is seeing with it and saying the positivity of strength training, right? Because um, you're developing your abilities, your nervous system's ability to go, to rest, to go and to rest. And again, the primary problem is poor cycles, right? Poor natural cycles of nervous system energy being overused and exhausted, spiking, overused and exhausted, right? So when we get a healthy cycle back in there, then we're getting, I think, the biggest bang for our buck in terms of exercising and activity, right? So there's something else to be said for cardio, right? So cardio burns 
through all the energy and nutrients you have in your blood is the way I understand it. I don't want to get too scientific. Don't believe in that, right? But I can feel this sensation, right? Like if I overeat or something and then I go do a run and I come back, I feel like I've kind of overcome the negative experience my body was having for eating, right? I don't necessarily get that from the gym. I get something different from the gym, right? When I go there and I work out, sometimes I feel like, like if I eat a lot, I feel like I'm gonna throw up. Like I feel like my body is metabolizing to greater extent what's in my blood. So if I eat sugar and then I go to the gym and work out, I'll actually get really amped up and overstimulated and over anxious a lot sooner, right? But if I go for a run instead, that run slow burns as far as I can tell, right? The way I experience it is that run slow burns that sugar and those things that went straight into my bloodstream from the food that aren't tied to fiber and don't get slowly digested, right? They go straight into you, right? And it took me a while to figure this out. And a buddy of mine that's been like a college athlete and stuff, he's like, he, I was, I was like, dude, I can't, I can't, I can't sleep after I go to the gym. What's going on? I didn't expect him to understand because he's a normie, right? And he's like, dude, the, the, the impact on your nervous system from strength training is completely different from your runs, bro. You, you're used to running. You're, you're great at running. You're an expert, right? He's like, but I've been working out for a long time, like in the gym, and it's different. It's the impact's different. It's a short term impact. Like you get these spikes, right? He's all, you need to look at it differently. The cardio, it's a slow burn. Like it, it completely affects your system differently. If you go to the gym and you go too hard and you overwork it, your nervous system is just going to be shot. He's like, I know what that's like. Um, it's different. You need to think about it in different terms. And that's the first time it occurred to me that there would be, there's different impacts and different kind of downstream effects from strength training versus cardio. And at first I was like, okay, I just won't run anymore, right? But that was not intelligent, right? Both have their appropriate place. And now I do a balance of both, even though some of the programs I was looking at said, you're just gonna do strength training, you don't need to worry about cardio. I don't agree with that at all, right? It, being well-balanced and well-rounded and be able to use both to your advantage right is fantastic so getting appropriate amount of rest from each one and then applying each one right so maybe if you've made some mistakes eating or you're feeling like you need some stamina right start implementing some cardio do some more cardio right your body might be craving cardio you might want to be able to you might want to go for long walks or long runs and just be out in nature for longer right versus like i hate going i hate going to the gym i'm inside i'm in an air-conditioned place and there's all these people around and the people are great right on certain days but other times i just want to be away from everything right and i want the stimulation from nature and stuff and it's not happening at the gym right and i might go to the gym for a while and not run much and then i feel a strong pull to just go run and to go hike and to get out right and it's really gratifying these are this is a natural cycle right you're getting natural bursts of stimulation from each one that's growing you in different ways and then you're getting a rest from each one and but when you're resting your body and your nervous system is rebuilding those forms of function in your body so that when you come back you're stronger and stronger each one and your mind is closer and closer to mastering the variables and how it looks at and how it handles each one is it's very important and this is the reason why i'm telling you like you have to look at this stuff and feel what what's going on and what you're looking for and what you're getting out of it and where you need to be at, right? The most incredible advice in the world, if it's geared towards everyone, it's not gonna help anyone, okay? So with exercise, that's it. Start where you're comfortable, grow from there, push the boundaries a little bit, don't over push it, right? You'll crash, something unpleasant will happen. But if you need to over push it to understand your boundaries, be ready and do it and then learn from it, okay? All right, so that's preliminary, I think primarily, that's what people think of when they think of like body activity, right? And, and getting out and doing things and whatnot. So the same principles kind of apply whether you're, you're not used to going out and going to the store, right? And you wanna start, do something very small. Go to this, maybe go just go visit the store. Don't buy anything at the store, right? Think smarter, not harder. I hate cliches, but it applies, right? Um, if you think about it in the right way, right? Go to the store. Don't buy anything there. Go to the store if you haven't been in a long time. If you've kind of been um, xenophobic and like and weird because of all this stuff, don't think you need to push yourself into something you're not, right? Like if it's hard for you to get out and it's exhausting and overstimulating, go to the store, take a look at it from your car or have a friend take you or whatever, right? Walk down there, take a look at it, think about it, go home. If you want to do that again the next day or that evening, do it again. 
go home, right? And then when your soul, when your inside is telling you, all right, it's time to go in and check some stuff out, go in and check some stuff out, maybe buy something. Don't take a list with you. Don't think you need to go there to do work, right? Get familiar with it. And then one day, maybe maybe in the same day, you'll be like, all right, I'm gonna go shopping. This is like great. I feel like this is stimulating. It's fun. Like I wanna do it, right? You'll do it, right? But if that's a, that's three months from now, don't worry about it. Who cares? Who cares if you do your shopping or not? I don't care. You shouldn't care. You know, do it when it feels right. Okay. And if it doesn't, don't let anybody bother you about it and don't bother yourself about it. Right. Same thing goes for working out, going to the store, maybe going for a walk or running, hiking. Maybe you're afraid of nature. Nature is a big beastly, gnarly thing. Right. But nature, it loves you and accepts you. You're a part of it. Right. If you go in there with the right mindset, everything will go wonderfully. If you go in there scared, everything's going to come out and be like, why is this freaked out person walking out here, right? Like, it's, it's coming out here to cause trouble, right? Bees are gonna come after you, flies are gonna get in your face, right? Dogs are gonna bark at you. It, that's how it works. Take it from me. Um, you go in there with the right mindset, like, bees will be landing on your shoulder and giving you high fives and stuff. It's fantastic. Um, so don't ignore your gut, don't ignore what you're thinking, like, give it its appropriate respect. Okay, so, this is kind of in the line of activity. So there's also, there's hobbies, right? Figuring out something that you like to do that's fun, that's stimulating, that you can learn and grow and do is, is really, really important, right? So take it one at a time, right? Like if it's just hard for you to get out of the house, get out of the house a little bit, right? If you wanna exercise, go slow with exercise. As you're conquering one thing at a time and Maybe it's getting a little monotonous and you feel like you want to implement something else, fold in something else. You know, if hobbies come first, hobbies come first. If there's something you really always wanted to do and you can manage to do it in a really small, simplistic way that sounds good and challenging to you and easy, do that, okay? Bring in a hobby, something that you can learn a little bit about, poke out about, that will stimulate your brain in a positive way, stress-free way. If you can bring joy and happiness or curiosity into your life, that is worth a million dollars a billion dollars, a trillion dollars um, in terms of neuroplasticity. You bring in a hobby that's creative and positive for you, you, the next week you have success with that and it's great, right? The next week, maybe you'd never wanna exercise and you hate it, right? Maybe the next week, maybe you'll be thinking about exercise a little bit differently, right? And you may not know why, but it's because your brain is changing, right? Those stress hormones are, are leaving and falling out, right? And What's left is some positivity, some creativity, and some bandwidth, some positive bandwidth that you have that you can apply towards different things. You don't, have, don't overdo it, right? Don't think you need to go crazy, right? Lots of times this impulse we automatically get is like, oh, I got this good positive energy and this good positive thing, I'm gonna go nuts. Like, I'm gonna go do this, I'm gonna do that, whatever. When you get those feelings, I would urge you to just take a step back, think a little bit, right? And then go forward and be, make sure you're comfortable when you get a little pushback, right? When your body is like, bad idea, I didn't like that, right? It's okay, just rest, just rest, right? If you come at this approach, you're you're far less likely to crash, right? Because the opposite is going nuts, doing all those things, thinking you need to continue doing them or to do more just because you have a good idea, right? But maybe you don't have the energy for it and now you crash, right? And now maybe you're in a horrible, overstimulated state where your body's screaming at you, all this stuff, right? And now you don't wanna do any of it anymore and you're just pissed that you had a failure, right? You don't have to put yourself there if you're cautious. So think a little bit, be wise, listen to yourself. Don't think you need to overdo anything, okay? Be happy with small steps, right? And then you can just grow those small steps into bigger ones. Eventually you'll be running and you'll be sprinting, okay? But they all come in their due time and they all deserve their own appropriate respect. And you have to be humble, okay? No one is entitled to even baby steps. Some people just roll around, right? Before they start taking baby steps. Be grateful for what you have, be humble, right? You may be thinking you want to run, right? But if you run, you're gonna have a massive setback. So guess what? You don't really want to run, right? You don't want that. I mean, you may not be thinking that way, but give consider some consideration to it and be humble. So that's, so that's hobbies. Try to think about something positive you might like to do. Um, it could be anything. It doesn't matter. Don't don't put any limit on your thinking and your brain and your mindset. Hobbies are great, right? For plasticity, um, all kinds of things. Um, 
and the same thing goes for people, right? There might be certain people that you want to talk to or reach out to um, that have been really great in your life. Do it. Have a little conversation. See how things go, right? You can get a lot of positivity and plasticity from other creative people that are in your life that might have good ideas and good perspectives and things like that. Don't think about hobby as like you have to go and um, like start knitting or uh, collecting stamps or something. Hobbies can be anything. You could be talking to people. You can be um, watching birds, um, taking dogs, take a dog for a walk, um, go outside and learn what kind of trees and flowers are outside your house and grass, learn a language, right? It could just strictly be intellectual. Um, it could be anything, right? Keep your mind open. Um, a word or two about nature and activity. So keep in mind with nature is that the form of nature is very random and beautiful and incredible and it's extremely stimulating to the human mind okay there was information that i read or a study that i read or something that said i think it was in terms of uh, vestibular like science or rehab that or maybe it was just one of the guys that were um helping me um with therapy of vestibular rehab what i can't remember exactly what it was but they're saying that Straight lines and man-made structures are actually hard for the brain to comprehend and to digest. So if you're in a place with a lot of straight lines and like squares and, and geometrical shapes that like has to be created by man, it'll actually throw people off balance and overstimulate them. And um, that can be kind of a problem and something to think about when you're thinking about how you feel. I went to um, this, this obligation, I'll call it, right? Um, last week and it was in a big building right with big rooms and big straight lines and stuff everywhere and i wasn't feeling great that day um but when i went in there i felt i instantly felt like i was gonna throw up and um i was like i don't know what's going on i just like being in here just sucks right and i'm looking and there's these i'm not used to these big wide open spaces with these big long lines and all this geometry and i realized the more i looked at stuff and the more i was there like the worse i felt and I just kind of relaxed and rested and that those feelings faded away and I was okay. But when I went outside and I there was this face the part that was facing trees and like the open sky and stuff, when I did that, I instantly felt better, right? And I took a, a breath of fresh air and I was like, oh, I just felt so at home and so calm, right? And I don't think it's any coincidence, right? Man-made structures and stuff is not really conducive to our brain. It doesn't mean it has to hurt us, right? But it's something to consider, right? If you spend some time in nature and observing like natural kind of features and occurrences and structures, you may, it may be a really good positive boost for you and spending a routine, thinking of a routine to get out into nature and stuff might be a really, really fantastic thing to implement right and i i think it's i mean i'm gonna say i think it's essential right the more nature you have around me around you the more you're you have access to it it's going to help you heal it's going to stimulate these parts of our brain that we're not even aware of that can conceive like beauty and curiosity and wonder and um kind of this grand elegance that i think nature puts on like there's sounds there's smells there's a lot of stimulation that is very gentle and it's very, very stimulating and it's very, very positive in my opinion, right? Like if you think about like going to a concert, like very, very stimulating, right? Very overstimulating, a lot to deal with and it's not very natural, right? And I think about how I feel when I'm in a setting similar to that even versus like being in nature and like there's there's just this massive contrast and um. I found that like spending time in nature is just, it does so much for me. Um, I can't always get to it, but it's something that I keep in the back of my mind and um, really, really restorative. And it's something to consider, I think. So where are we at here? Okay, I remember. So again, there's this overarching theme, okay, that supports, it's doing a lot of different things at once. So one aspect of that is these, these natural flows and rhythms to thing, things, they're breaking fight or flight. They're breaking the dysregulation, right? If you think about being stuck in fight or flight, the antithesis to that is having nice, healthy cycles and transitions into like resting, having activity, right? So you do activity, you amp your body up a little bit, right? And then you rest and you gain the confidence that resting paired with healthy activity, 
right? In this rhythmic cycle, it's like, oh, I'm starting doing a lot. You're like, oh man. And for someone like us, we might be like, oh man, I don't feel like I can calm down from this. I'm really amped, right? And then you're like, okay, I'm just gonna rest. And then you rest, and tw- ten minutes later, you feel great and you're ready to go again. You're sending your brain and your body this signal that's saying, I'm safe, right? If I'm working hard, I can rest again and I'm safe. I'm working hard and then I'm safe. I'm working and I'm safe. I'm working and I'm safe. And then before not too long of doing that, you your brain starts to think the opposite of what we think now. It's like no matter what I do, I can calm down and be safe. There's a natural cycle. So no matter how amped or how jacked I get or how far I get into fight or flight, if I just rest afterwards, everything will calm down and I'll be able to reset and I'll be able to go back at it again. It'll be fine, right? This is the opposite of what we feel now. Being in a dysregulated state from an injury, we get amped and then we can't calm down and then we're deathly afraid that we can't calm down. So then we're more amped and then we're crashed and fatigued and we're super depressed and we don't want to be there. So then we're amped about being depressed, right? And this cycle is not breaking. The months drag on and then the years start to drag on, right? And this is keeping us, just the fact that we're going through this kind of negative feedback cycle is keeping us in fight or flight, right? And it's building our the ease of which we can go into fight or flight, right? So the technique that I'm talking about now and the approach is a natural way to get out of fight or flight, right? You start getting these positive feedbacks, even if they're small, right? Over really small stuff, you gain some confidence that you can do 30 seconds of activity and then rest and then do 30 seconds of activity again, right? And rest and then do 35 seconds of activity and then rest, right? Whatever it is, big or small, this is building confidence in how we feel. And that's all it takes for us to move forward and to break the cycle of being stuck in fight or flight. Okay, this is natural. You don't need anybody or anything to do it. You can figure it out for yourself. It's that simple. If you take some time and you study what I'm saying diligently, like it makes perfect sense and it's applicable for everybody. Everybody can do it, right? All right, and it just occurred to me too. So I think a lot of people know this stuff like kind of inherently, right? It's not too, not too much of a surprise. But so what... Uh, so we, when we understand it, it goes into kind of this autonomic memory and we just assume that we're doing it, right? It doesn't come into our conscious m- mind anymore. So if you're struggling with this stuff, do whatever you have to do to bring it into your conscious mind on a daily basis. Like make a schedule, build a routine, right? Make a note somewhere you're going to see it every day so that you can kind of reiterate and build these kind of things into what you're doing in your thinking process. Um, So you can break, you know, bad habits and kind of break these, um, these negative feedback loops and change them. Maybe you have to listen to this podcast over like periodically, like once a week or something. If you agree with what I'm saying, you find it helpful, right? Or maybe you need to make notes or maybe you need to make an audio recording of yourself with certain core things that you need to hear on a daily basis and you play it every morning when you get up. Maybe you play it at lunch. Maybe you play it, play it at night. Um, but do what you got to do to break the cycle and to get into a place that you know you need to be and don't settle, right? Um, it doesn't take any effort to initiate a change, right? Like you can initiate it very simply, like making a note, setting an alarm, thinking it, right? But it is very difficult. It takes a lot of energy to do it in repetition so that it actually makes a change in your mind and in your life. So that's going to be the hard step for you. But so if, you, so if you're thinking it now, you're trying to do it now, get it done. Do it. Don't be like, okay, I'll come back to this later, right? Or I'll remember this tomorrow. Don't do it. The moment you have the energy Take advantage of it. Do it now. Don't settle. Don't let anybody stop you. Don't forget, right? Just get it done and do it. It'll, it's in those moments where you feel a small amount of determination that you're set free from the habits of the past and the pain of the past, all right? So hold on to that one. Um, that being said, I got good energy right now. I think I'm going to keep going and not break the podcast up, but I want to talk about sleep a little bit. It's another really big topic that... um people are constantly on about and I think it's it's really misunderstood 
and I don't think people study it very well. I think they people think, oh, I'm entitled to sleep. Like I'll just sleep will come, or I can't sleep. I'm I'm agitated. I need sleep, and it's just you know why can't I have sleep? Like all these weird ideas around it. Um, the human body doesn't need much sleep. It will survive with virtually no sleep, and you will be absolutely miserable. You start to have psychosis. Um, you'll break down in a lot of different ways, but you will get small amounts of sleep that will keep you alive, like 30 minutes resting, napping, whatever, a couple hours. Um, so this is problematic, right? We don't want to be in this state of like toxic, bad sleep. Um, we don't want to be in a state where we're so amped, we become so exhausted and we sleep a little bit and then we're just amped for weeks again after that and we don't sleep much, right? Um, sleep is a really, really powerful thing. So we're not entitled to it. Um, our body doesn't need much sleep to function and to exist, right? But that's the big thing, right? Is existence when we're totally kind of out of our minds really what you want? Or are you willing to do what you got to do to get to a place where you're back in your body, you're sleeping well, you're functioning and everything and you understand things well and everything's going the way that is healthy, right? Man, healthy, positive, whatever you want to call it, right? It's going in a way where you feel like you own your body and your mind and it's not feeling like the opposite, like you're dissociated and nothing's going the way that you expect or you know that it's just not a good spot right so sleep <laughs> the flip thing is when i did my long fast right i kind of always come back to all the things i learned on my long fast so i didn't know i my sleep i hadn't dreamt in you know five years or way probably way beyond my injury right um you usually wake up feeling horrible after sleep right and uh when I started fast, when I did my long fast, when I got far enough along in it, again, like a couple of weeks or something, I started having these dreams. And my dreams came back. And I was dreaming vividly every single night without fail. It was the wildest thing that happened to me. It was like living another life. And I started having sleep where I woke up and I felt like a million bucks. Um, even if I, as my day went on, like I didn't feel great. I would wake up feeling completely rested. I'd sleep for a couple hours sometimes because with fasting, people complain about insomnia, but you have to let go of that. You can't stress about it. Your body's doing what it needs to do. And if you're not sleeping, that's okay on a fast um, because you're resting anyways. And you get so much rest on a fast that your body kind of stops sleeping and it starts doing other other processes while you're laying down. And that's okay. Everyone's fine. Um, but if you're stressed out about it and you're worried about it, and all of a sudden you think you need sleep to exist, which you don't, you're not entitled to it, um, and you will stay alive with 10 minutes of sleep a day, um, even though it will be unpleasant. I've seen it. Um, I've experienced it for a little while. That when that sleep comes back and you can let go of that stress around sleep, it's incredible. But it's it's just life changing. So what your body does during sleep is this immaculate kind of rest that just blows all the other rest out of the water, and it gives kind of I don't know it like I, I mean there's books and books and books on sleep and dreaming and stuff like that. But when you've got restorative sleep, your life changes. And if you haven't had any, like I hadn't had any for five years, um, it sticks out in your mind, and you start thinking about sleep a little bit differently. But as most things, it's paradoxical, right? The more you're concerned about getting good sleep and you can't, the worse your sleep will get and the more you'll be torn from sleep. You have to let go of sleep and accept that you don't need sleep to be able to sleep um, in, in a big way, right? I think to get to a place where you can sleep. Now, if you fast, you do different things and you can't sleep. Even if you think you need sleep, it's still going to come back to you. You're still going to be able to sleep and you're still going to have great sleep, right? But letting go of the idea of you needing sleep Again, paradoxically, I think is helpful. I've laid up lots of nights being stressed out that I couldn't sleep. And um, not great, not good deal, right? Um, just made it worse. Just like the tinnitus. Tinnitus just made worse by not wanting the tinnitus. Same thing, right? So along that paradoxical line, this is what I learned. This is the core of what I learned um, lately that 
it, it has to do with fasting, but I guess in a way it doesn't as well. I was going to say it doesn't have anything to do with fasting, but fasting is rest. So sleep improve, improving when you're fasting is a hint. And, um, and the giveaway is that the more you rest and the better you get at resting, the better you sleep. So let me say that again. You have to rest to sleep well. You have to be rested and calm to get good restorative sleep. That's how sleep works. So let's think about, so the opposite of this will also be true if it's completely true, right? So the more amped you are and the more dysregulated you are, the more unrested you are, the worse your sleep will be and the la- and the less sleep you will get, okay? So you may feel exhausted, right? You may work hard all day and then go home to go to sleep and you're exhausted, right? That doesn't mean you're going to sleep well. Being exhausted is not being rested, right? Being ro- exhausted is being unrested, right? So when you come to sleep, say when you come to sleep, when you... When you go to, when you're getting ready to go, you come home at the end of the night, you've been working, right? Or whatever, take it in a, just a normie context, right? Worked all day, you're exhausted, you come home, you go to sleep. Good idea or bad idea? Bad idea, right? It may feel good, it may be grat- self gratifying in a lot of ways, but I remember a lot of those nights and that was just like a blackout sleep. It was like getting drunk and passing out, right? You wake up and you feel horrible, right? Usually, same thing with that. The majority of times for me, sometimes I'll sleep well. Um, sometimes not. So maybe I might be exhausted and also relaxed and I might sleep well, but generally I'm exhausted and just exhausted and overwhelmed, right? And sleep's horrible. So you need to rest before you go to sleep. So if you're exhausted, do some things to rest and to calm down. Read, lay down, Talk to somebody about what's bothering you, right? Do something to have a release. Do something to get rested. Do something to get calm, right? Watch your favorite, I watch Disney movies sometimes, the old school ones like Snow White and stuff because they're super calm. They're super mellow, but they're just like slightly engaging. So like they kind of keep me awake, right? But they're so mellow and kind of so predictable and so easygoing and so laissez-faire that I'm like, this is, I just feel I'm watching this movie. I feel great. This is great. It's a fantasy life. I wish I was, I wish I was Snow White, and I ran away into a haunted forest, and I found a d- dwarves that were rad and cool and had personality, and I could chill with them for a while, and you know that whole bit, man. That sounds like fun. This is a charmed life. It's cool. It's exciting. It's fun. Um, it's calm. It's predictable, right? I've seen the story a bunch, right? It rests me. It something about it rests me. It makes me think that. Life can be comfortable, it can be calm, it can be curious, it can be fun without being dangerous and too much and over-exhausting and over-exciting and over-stimulating, right? And much of the lifestyle, go back 100 years and the way it was for a lot of people, right? That gives, that puts you into a rested state. So the rest I was talking about before, like resting, resting in between tasks and calming down and letting your nervous system rejuvenate yourself for a minute, that's where you want to be when you're going to sleep. Okay, you want to be calm. So one way to get calm, right? One thing that I've done is I nap during the day, right? It keeps me calm. It keeps me rested during the day. I thought napping during the day would keep me up at night. And I was like, I started napping at very specific times because I was like, man, if I nap too close to bedtime, I won't be able to sleep. I found the opposite to be true. Napping. When I feel tired during the day, when I'm ready for a rest, I kind of relax. Before I take a nap, I nap. I wake up, feel much better, right? Generally, every once in a while, I don't feel great after a nap, but like nine times out of 10, I feel good, right? And then I might even wake up a little bit later, like maybe like three or four o'clock, right? And maybe I'm gonna go to bed at like eight or nine, right? Only have a few hours being awake. I found on those days, right? Even if I have some healthy activity in the meantime, right? I sleep better after that. And it's because I'm rested. I'm generally rested when I go to sleep. When you're sleeping, right? Your nervous system is working like hard, right? Doing all kinds of really, really important stuff, right? And again, don't eat, right? 
eating, we think eating is restful, but no, actually the opposite is true. You need to rest and digest, right? So you need to be in a resting calm state in order to digest your food, right? So that's implying that the food and the digestion is work because you need to shut off your other systems so your body can work and digest that food, right? So you don't want to be ready to be have your body working while it's also trying to work, right, and sleep and do the healative restorative the healative <laughs> the restorative healing stuff when you're sleeping, right? So you're catching my drift here. Anything you can think that is restful, you want to do that one to two hours before you go to sleep. So in the past, I would work out like maybe two hours before I go to sleep because I would feel tired after working out, right? And I then it was easier for me to rest before I went to sleep. I wouldn't work out right before I went to sleep, right? I would say work out, it kind of gives you this natural uptick, right? Now we're talking about a healthy rhythm, like you're working and then you're resting, working and resting, right? So you work a little bit. So if I, for instance, okay, if I was having insomnia right now, right? I'd probably, I would do two things, right? I would work out maybe later, like say I was gonna go to bed at nine o'clock, right? Or that was my kind of target, right? So maybe around like six or seven, I'd work out, right? And make sure I was done by seven, say that. Maybe five or six, I'd work out or something, right? Maybe do some cardio, do a run, maybe go to the gym, whatever. Then I'd come home from that or come in from that or whatever, right? Every night I'd start doing the same thing, start having the same dependent rhythm so my body can get easily get into a rested state because it, ex it knows what to expect. So then come home, I mean, you could take a warm shower or maybe you just sit down and rest for a minute, right? Or lay down for a minute even after you worked out, right? Massage, heat, a million things you can do after you've stimulated like your muscles in your body to kind of like bring it down and rest it and massage them, do some heat and ice. Um, again, watch something calming, read a book, right? And then have some tea, right? No caffeine, obviously, right? Chamomile, whatever, whatever you react to well. Um, have some calm tea. You don't want to drink a lot of water before bed because you might like wake up and disturb your sleeping cycle, but just a little bit, just something you could like sip on that's like kind of calming and easy going, right? Then do that. Reading is also dynamite. Like even if you can't read real well, like if you read a little bit, something that you really like, you know, read a little bit. So work out, come home, rest, put on some tea, get out a book, read a little bit, sip your tea, read some more, set yourself up like in your bed or in a place where you can just kind of drift off. Now keep in mind, like as you rest, you're setting yourself up for sleep. So even if you're like in another room or something, but you're getting, you're resting. So you almost, it's almost like putting yourself to sleep before you go to sleep. Something that I thought was problematic, like I would do things with people like I'd watch a show with people or do something that sometimes I start to fall asleep with right and I thought oh if I fall asleep before I go to sleep it's a problem right no it's kind of like like if you go to the bathroom in the middle of the night when you're sleeping right you kind of like try to stay asleep like when you go to the bathroom right and you just go straight back to sleep but if you wake up then it's harder to get back to sleep right it's the same thing like if you start falling asleep say you're in a two-story house right you start falling asleep downstairs and then you need to go upstairs to go to sleep that's excellent, that's great, do that, right? You're kind of like hitting your goal before you execute like kind of your target mission, right? Like, it's like you get there, you set yourself up perfectly, you get to the door and then you just walk through it and go to sleep, right? So if you're resting, you're doing all this stuff downstairs, right? Don't worry about waking up, but don't wake up, right? Just, you're in a fully rested state, you're starting to go to sleep, when you start to go to sleep, you're like, all right, I'm gonna go up to bed, right? Stay rested. Don't do anything. Don't think about anything. You're in your rested state. Go up, lay in bed. You're out, right? Or if you set yourself up, say you turn off all your lights and or you just have a book light on, maybe it's on a timer or something, right? Sipping tea in bed, maybe doing whatever's calming in bed. Um, maybe you have a heating pad in bed, right? Massager, whatever. You do that. Man, if I lay on a heating pad in bed, I crash like every single time right perfect right everyone has their thing that works for them right maybe taking a warm shower before you lay down and then read a little bit in bed whatever everyone's got their thing right 
But if you're having insomnia or sleeping is hard or you're not having a good quality of sleep for whatever reason, right, and you want to maximize it, set this pattern every single night. And again, your body and your mind will come to rely on this pattern and then just keep executing this pattern. It may take a day or two. It may take a week, right? You may have to really let go of this idea of not being able to sleep, right? You may be stressing yourself out even though you're doing these rheumatic things. But if you do these things in rhythm, right, when the time comes and that moment that you finally let go of that stress, boom, you'll be out, okay? So it's like kind of like laying the groundwork, right? And being ready to go, right? It's like warming up the car, even though you're not ready to get in yet, right? But the car's on, it's waiting, right? And then the moment you're done stressing out about not sleeping, get in the car and go, right? You don't have to turn it on. You don't have to put your shoes on. You don't have to open the garage. Everything's open. Everything's ready to go, right? Make it easy for yourself. So the moment that you're ready, boom, done, gone, right? You're asleep. And then the next day, you're feeling better. It's all Everything's moving right in the positive direction, right? Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. And then when you break that pattern, it's okay. Don't worry about it. All right, you break the pattern, come back to the pattern. It's a pattern, it'll be there for you when you need it. You can rely on it, okay? So with sleep, remember, be rested to go to sleep, right? Build patterns and comfort around resting and sleeping before you sleep, and it'll come. I already talked in the last one about fasting. Like if you do a small fast, it fasting is resting. So if you're fasting before you're going to sleep, right? You're resting before you're going to sleep, right? And if it's a longer fast, it's a different story. You might sleep less, but it's it's a, it's fine. But short fasts definitely help with sleep quality, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I know. Huge deal. So keep those things in mind. Um, I hope this was all really helpful. I think I covered everything I need to. I certainly covered the essentials. I'm absolutely sure of it. So again, thanks for listening. I know what I'm teaching is benign and simple. Maybe it seems... Like it's a given, it's not. People are not getting really, really good at navigating this simplistic stuff. Life wasn't meant to be complicated, but it is meant to be fun, creative, challenging, all these things, right? It's simplistic, yet it also requires a fine, a lot of attention from you, right? You're mastering simple things, right? Not complicated, but difficult, simple things, right? You really have to apply yourself. So, Hang in there. I hope you're well. Take care of yourself. And uh, the next one that's coming up is Mind, I think, which will be really cool. Um, So I'm looking forward to that one. All right. Take it easy, everybody.